Now I'm going to take you through how to use the Zoom H6 recorder to record your interviews with people when they're with you, obviously, in the room. That's why we got this. Um, so obviously you have your stand and your microphone, and um, I'm going to show you about plugging them in. I've got another microphone over here off camera, sort of, and um, there, these cables have two different ends. Uh, one goes into the microphone, one goes into the device. The one that has the three little metal contacts goes into the Zoom recorder. The one that has the three little holes and this little button to release it goes into your microphone. So you want to plug it into your microphone first. And then if you're going to be, um, when you're interviewing somebody, I recommend you, you're going to plug the other end of the cable into your device, and I recommend using usually number one on this side and number three on the other side, really just to keep track of, um, you know, which microphone or which person is on which track. I mean, you could do both on the same side if you want, but I always find it a little easier to keep track if I do them on opposite sides. So now... I've plugged in, so this mic right here is going over to the other person, and this mic coming toward me is coming to me. And then what you want to make sure you do is push. Now, of course, the guest here is in number one, so I'm going to push number one, and you see how it's red because it's going to record, and then I'm going to push number three. You got to make sure you do that. If you use one and two, make sure you push one and two. You got to push this number for each microphone that you're gonna use. And then you're gonna talk into the microphone. And you will see on there, um, you, you have a dial for each one. And as you talk, as you see, I'm talking into number three right now. And as I'm adjusting this dial, you wanna you know, always keep your mouth a consistent distance away from the microphone. And then you wanna dial that until you're between you know, peaking at what the meaning when that level meter rises, you want to be between negative six and negative 12. I can't see that very well. Are we in there? Yeah. Okay, good. We're right in there. Oh, no, adjust it a little more. Okay. And the same thing for your guest. I would stop talking and then my guest would speak into the microphone going into number one and adjust their level till they're coming in here between negative six and negative 12. That's ideal. Then once you set that, you're ready to record. You just come here and push that record button and you're recording. When you're ready to stop, you push the stop button. It's that simple. If you forgot to record something or you have one more question, fine. Hit record again. It'll record another file, but that doesn't matter. You can send us as many files as you need to. Um, another thing here in the middle of this device, there are these little switches which are kind of hard to see. They have a little switch for each one of these. That's a decibel adjustment, and you really don't want to mess with that. The only time you would use it is if you were in a very noisy environment and there was a lot of background noise, then you would flip that switch. And it really focuses more on just recording what comes directly into the microphone and ignores a lot of background noise. But it, it, it's filtering out noise, so you don't really want to use it unless you have to record in a noisy environment. So uh, I just want to let you know what it was. In general, you won't need it. When you're done recording, um, there's, you know, this the power switch is right here. You pull and hold and release, and it would turn it off. Uh, when you're done recording, you would also remove the uh, SD card. You just push it, and it's sort of spring-loaded. It will come out, and that'll go right in, usually right into your computer. Usually you, your computer has a computer slot for an SD card. If not, you can get a USB adapter for one for, you know, five bucks. And then um, you would then copy the files off that SD card and then upload them to us, and we're gonna send you a video upload tutorial for when you're ready to send us files. Kind of, You sent it through Dropbox when you sent your initial episode. There's another system we have that makes it a little easier than that, but, uh, and then once you're sure those files have been copied to your computer and to us, you can then delete the files from the SD card and then uh, put it back in to record more for next time. I got you a 64 gigabyte SD card, which is pretty big, and that, that should really hold a lot of recordings. 
Um, but you do eventually want to delete them off of there and keep it free. So eventually, many episodes down the road, you don't run out of space on your SD card. Uh, those are really the basics. Um, we've already configured this unit so that you know you don't have to worry about any settings of in the in the software and the menus of the device uh, if it ever were to reset i do have a tutorial video i can send you for how to reset it but we've already configured it for you so all you got to do is plug your microphones turn it on push the right buttons adjust your levels and hit record now one other thing i want to go over about recording your guests I know you're going to do this on the road. Sometimes you'll be in a hotel, perfectly fine. Sometimes you might be in someone else's home, maybe, in their living room or whatever. Uh, all that's fine. But when you're recording more than one person, I highly recommend you sit across from someone, either across the room, sitting on different sofas or chairs, or across a table. What I don't want you to do is have you and whoever you're interviewing be sitting next to each other, and holding your microphones like this. Because if you do that, your voice is going to bleed over into their mic and their voice is gonna bleed over into your mic. The whole point of recording separate tracks is to make it easier to edit and to make a better quality podcast po product, uh, episode at the end of the day. So while this Zoom device records separate tracks of each of you, that works better if your microphones are pointed in opposite directions and you're a little farther apart from each other because then you're talking into your mic, you want to stay a consistent distance from the mic as all, at all times if you can. Even if you're holding it by hand, that's fine too. Just try to keep a consistent distance. But your mic is really going to pick you up very strongly and that mic over there because it's pointing in another direction and it's farther away is not going to pick you up so much. And the less of that bleeding of your voice into the other mic and your guest voice into your mic that there is, the better quality the end result will be. So keep that in mind. You can be sitting on sofas. These cords are pretty darn long. You could stretch out, you know, probably 20 feet between you if you really wanted to. You don't have to do that, but you can. Uh, you have a lot of, a lot of, you know, length to do that with. So. That was, that's really it. Those are the basics. Uh, don't forget to carry some fresh double A's with you in case this runs low, or you're going to have to use the power cord, the USB cord here to plug into the side and plug it into an AC adapter or to a computer to power this device. Um, so I recommend, you know, taking some extra batteries with you. And, you know, in your case that we got you, if you want, you can, this foam here, um, you can actually, it, it's called pick and pluck foam. You can actually, you know, break some of it out here or here if you want to make some space to put extra batteries or anything else that you might have that you want to take with you. You, you can customize this a little bit more to meet your needs. So anyway, um, those are the basics. If you have any questions, let me know.